Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack Number 50, Installing Vagrant. In this episode, you'll learn how to install VirtualBox and how to install and launch Vagrant. What is Vagrant? Vagrant provides easy to configure, reproducible, and portable work environments. Built on top of industry standard technology and controlled by a single consistent workflow, to help maximize the productivity and flexibility of you and your team. So it's a way to manage a virtual machine on your local environment. So why use Vagrant or any kind of virtual machine? If you're on Windows, a virtual machine is your only option for Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails does not play with Windows very nicely. When I first started out, I had a Windows machine and I was using VMware to launch a virtual Ubuntu machine so that I could learn to develop with Ruby on Rails. I've now switched completely over to Ubuntu as my main machine. But if you're just starting out and you're just playing around, a virtual machine is the way to go on Windows. Another reason is that you can develop in an environment practically identical to your production server. So if you're on a Mac, most production servers are Linux. So if you really want to make sure what you're doing is going to work on your production server, then you can go ahead and develop in that environment. If you're working on a team, other members of your team can create their development environments from the same configuration. Then you know everybody's working from the same Ruby version, the same Node version, everything's the same. If you'd like to look at some more reasons, here's a link to the Vagrant page, Why Vagrant? Vagrant depends on another software called VirtualBox, which is a virtual machine provider. You want to download and install for your operating system. And you can go to this link for VirtualBox for the downloads. Now, I actually had a bit of trouble with that download and spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting. And eventually, I needed to install from the command line and not from simply downloading from the page. So here are the commands that eventually worked for me. And I'm currently on 1404 Trusty Tar on Ubuntu. I'll be upgrading soon. But here's what worked for me. And if you use this, be sure to use the nickname of your version instead of Trusty. So if you went up to 15, to Vivid, just be sure you're using the correct nickname. And you want to be sure to install the newest VirtualBox. At the time of this recording, it was VirtualBox 5.1. And I got this from an Ask Ubuntu question. Again, you're going to need to look at your particular operating system and make the best choice for you. Once you have VirtualBox all set up, you can download and install Vagrant for your operating system. So again, you can go to Vagrant Up Downloads and choose one. Now for Ubuntu, don't be tempted to use App Get as it installs old versions. And check out this post if you want to try something else. I went ahead and downloaded from the Vagrant site and let my package manager take care of it. Now, in my fun of figuring out how to install VirtualBox, I actually did not record the version that worked. So I'm going to skip ahead that part, do that on your own. I'm just going to show you how it worked for me to download and install Vagrant. Here we are on the Vagrant site where you can find your operating system. And for me, it would be the Debian release and I will go for the 64-bit. So I clicked on that, and I just opened up with the software center for Ubuntu, and you see how it says, oh, you could install with AppGet if you wanted to, but that does an old version. So let's, let's have the newest and greatest. So I'm going ahead and installing, and that installed. Now you're going to choose your Vagrant box. A box is a specially pre-configured package image, usually Ubuntu, since most production servers are Ubuntu. You can go to this link to look at all the different boxes, look for the one you want to use, and note the name. For example, Ubuntu Trusty 64. So here we are on that site, and I see it's actually the most popular one right there, so I'm going to install that one. Now to initiate and install the Vagrant box, you navigate to the folder where you want to create your Rails project and run Vagrant init and the name of the box you want to initiate. You want to make sure it's in the same folder because it will share files between the Vagrant box and your Rails app, which is not stored on the Vagrant app that's stored on your local machine. So in my terminal, I will CD into my sites folder, whatever folder you want to use to create your Rails app. And then I will paste in the command to initiate. 
and all it does is create a Vagrant file with all kinds of preset configurations. You do want to open this Vagrant file and change one line especially. It's configured to open port 80 and host 8080. Well, for a Rails app, the more standard port number is 3000. So go ahead and change that to 3000 and host 3000. That way you can spin up your server as usual and then be able to look at it on your local browser. So I'm gonna open mine with Sublime and then I will scroll on down. It has a line already there that is pre-configured, so I'm just gonna change it. Right now, it's line 22. So I'll comment that out and change it from 80 to 3000 and from host 8080 to 3000. And I'll save that. Now, just to show you that you could have multiple boxes, I'll make another directory. So we'll say it's another vagrant file. So if you have a lot of the same projects that use the same virtual box, that's okay. The same configuration, that's fine. But if you needed another configuration, you're going to want that in a different folder so they don't get confused. So as you can see, I made another folder. I initiated another box. And if I open that Vagrant file, it's all brand new and it's different. Now, finally, we launch Vagrant. The command is simple, Vagrant up. And go ahead and take a break as it's installing the operating system when you do it for the first time. When you do it later times, then it's not going to do that. It'll come right up. After that's done, go ahead and take a test drive. Go ahead and SSH into the Vagrant. It's just like as if you had set up a production server and you're SSHing into that. The command is Vagrant SSH. All right, back in our terminal, you see I've gotten rid of the other Vagrant stuff. Now I'm saying Vagrant up, and it's going to start to install my new box that has Ubuntu on it. And this takes some time, so I'm just going to cut away to when it ended. Now I actually had to troubleshoot a little bit, so you see the screen's a little different, but I did finally get it to work with my virtual box, and then it's all installed. So now let's take it for a test drive, Vagrant SSH, and drum roll. Here it comes, just as if I had made a production server. In the next episode, we'll get this box all set up for developing your Rails machine. We'll have to install Ruby and all kinds of other stuff. Here are some additional resources. You can check out more of the Vagrant docs. They have lots and lots of information. And I am going from a blog post that you can click on there if you want to jump ahead and see if you can figure out the rest. It's a little old, so you'll see that I did a few things a little differently especially for my local machine. Again, you will have to troubleshoot and work for your own machine. Thanks again for watching this episode of Ruby Thursday. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up. And if you are not subscribed on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. You get the videos just a little bit before everyone else. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.